Um, so hello everyone, um, my name is Sarah Hudson, I'm uh, an acad academic here at the University of Limerick based in the Bernal Institute in the Department of Chemical Sciences. So I co-lead the materials team with Mike Sarawako. It's a big team, we have 11 investigators, about 9 postdoc researchers, 27 PhD students. As you can see from all the logos over here, we have a lot of different uh, projects with academic institutions and industrial partners, both nationally and internationally. So we operate our team uh, in two groups. We have the crystal engineering cohort and we have the engineering crystals cohort. And I hope by the end of this talk, you'll be able to identify the difference between the two. Um, all of our investigators are involved in leading projects, supervising PhD students um, and engaging with industry. Um, so this is kind of a schematic we would have used at the start of phase two of our materials theme and, and it's interesting from the conversations and the discussions around Sally and Sarah and Norma's presentations. Um, we're centered here in the middle in the materials. Our objective is to generate better and cheaper medicines through improved material properties. And the materials we're talking about are combinations of your active molecule from the drug discovery stage um, and combining them with excipients to generate your medicines, okay? Um, and our goal is to design materials that will have improved properties, such as better flow properties, as Sarah talked about, better compactability, uh, tensile strength, uh, better dissolution profiles, better stability. Um, the problem is, and again, as you, as you saw from the earlier presentations, the solid forms that we design, the crystal structures, they may not have the properties we desire. And it's difficult to uh, predict which crystal structure will have the desired properties. Um, another aspect is that while tablets are not going anywhere, they're the easiest to administer, most patient compliant way to take our medicine. But there are often active molecules that have properties such as stability or their size or their complexity um, that mean we have to look at different routes of administration. And you'll see from some of the topics and projects in the medicines theme that people take their medicines topically, they inhale them, uh, parenterally injections. Maybe you're looking for a long-acting uh, medicine whereby you can take your injection or your, your formulation uh, once uh, and not have to take it again for six months versus taking a tablet every day or two. Um, so like I said, we, we need to design our crystalline solids. The, the challenge is, is finding the solid form that has optimal properties, but we're also trying to design materials for unique formulations for long-acting and bio-based therapeutics. Sorry, therapeutics. Um, so if I look at a couple of the projects from crystal engineering, so here we're looking at the design of uh, multi-component small molecule crystals and combination drug products. Um, so we've heard Sarah talk about co-crystals. Uh, there's a couple of poster sessions this evening uh, and in the five o'clock session from Shasha, uh, Mariam, and Shan. Um, what we're looking at here is, is engineering co-crystals with understudied supramolecular synthons. So you can see the different types of synthons that we're designing, engineering the crystals, and looking to generate uh, powders with different properties. Um, Ahmed is a fourth year student from Galway working under Constantina and Constantina is giving a talk tomorrow and she'll talk a bit more about this project. But he's been designing and, and uh, synthesizing new biocompatible porous materials, MOFs, metal organic frameworks. The beauty of these MOFs is, is that they've got pores where you can load your drug into. A recent publication from Ahmed, he loaded very high loadings of doxorubicin, uh, an anti-cancer drug, and could uh, look and see a pH-dependent release profile of the drug from the MOF. Um, if we look at an example of some of the engineering crystals project, the next speaker, Michael, who's up after me, is going to talk to you about solution clustering and what that means for the early stages of the nucleation process. Harsh Brewer has a poster, again, that'll be up this evening on solution clustering as well. Mariana Dinez is working on nucleation kinetics and again has a poster later on. Um, uh, but we also look at trying to uh, engineer crystals so that they have our desired particle size and morphology. Um, Pat Frawley's group with uh, Roshin is looking at shear secondary nucleation where they're looking to predict the maximum turbulent shear stress in agitation vessels. Michael, who's here and has a poster session at lunchtime now, is looking at quantifying the distribution of impurities in your crystals. Okay. Um, 
Here in UL and as part of the SSPC, we have two commercialization fund projects funded by Enterprise Ireland. Uh, one is from Luis Pedrella's group, uh, one of our investigators, uh, CM Nano, where he uses his supercritical spray drying process to generate drug nanoparticles. He's gonna give a talk about that um, tomorrow or this afternoon, I can't remember which. Um, and we also have uh, another commercialization project called NanoComp from my own group. Here we use an anti-solvent precipitation process. We add our drug solution to an anti-solvent. High nucleation rates get lots of nanoparticles. We stabilize and isolate them by adding a carrier particle with particular surface properties that allow the absorption of the nanoparticles to the surface. They maintain their very high dissolution rates due to their nano size. They don't aggregate on the surface. We can get loadings up to 30% weight per weight. That nanocomposite powder is micron sized, easy to filter, uh, has good flow properties, easy to tablet. And you can see just over here, um, this was where we used the nanocomp process with Valsartan. Uh, Valsartan's commercial tablet on the market is Diovan. That's the black dissolution curve there. And our nanocomp tablet, you can see, has a, uh, a faster dissolution profile um, compared to the com sorry, commercial one. So Ajay Kumar, again, has a poster on Nanocomp, so if you have any questions about the process and the number of APIs we've tested with it, I think we've tested 15 or, or 16 at this point, and they've all worked quite well. Um, Sarah already mentioned our Marie Curie project, Long Act Now. Um, so this is um, a project in collaboration with uh, Trinity, uh, Dortmund and Janssen in Birsa in Belgium, uh, where we're looking at comparing crystallization, uh, bottom-up approaches, to top-down size reduction approaches to generate your drug uh, suspension for long-acting injectable. Um, Mariana Silva, who's here today, uh, just got a paper accepted into crystal growth and design, where she looked at the impact of excipients and seeding on the rate of polymorphic transformation of uh, indomethacin uh, when, it was, um, when it was precipitated or crystallized during um, an anti-solvent precipitation method. Um, so we can design or engineer crystal forms, solid powders to control or manipulate the dissolution rate. Um, but another way to uh, manipulate the dissolution rate of, of drugs is to use um, excipients or additives like polymers or different types of matrices. So we have a series of publications here where we used uh, lipid cubic phases, both in their bulk gel form or dispersed as a cubosome formulation. And we uh, encapsulated a range of hydrophobic drugs and hydrophilic drugs. So anti-cancer, antihistamines, uh, antimicrobial drugs. And we controlled the uh, rate of release. And we also incorporated a lipase inhibitor uh, that could, uh, depending on the loading of the lipase inhibitor, slow down the degradation of the cubic phase and therefore control the rate of release of the drug. Um, as I said, and as you've seen across, you'll see it in the molecules themes uh, being presented tomorrow, you'll see it in the medicines themes, and you've seen it in, in some of the presentations earlier today. The SSPC works with small molecules, but they also work, work with large molecules. Uh, Laura Coffey is doing a PhD building on some work from Jerry Heng in Imperial, where she's looking at using amino acids as soft templates uh, for protein crystallization using a, a single drop vapor diffusion method. So her preliminary results, and she has a poster on this as well this evening, uh, have shown that L-histidine seemed to uh, promote the nucleation, whereas arginine uh, seems to inhibit uh, the nucleation of the lysozyme crystals. Um, we're also developing our lipid-based materials for delivery of antimicrobial peptides. Um, so the peptides we're working with, and again, I know Kevin will talk about some of this, uh, uh, about antimicrobials uh, tomorrow, but the peptides we're working with come from our collaborators in Cork, Paul Ross and Colin Hill. We produce them upstairs uh, in a fermentation process. Uh, some of them we can buy commercially. But we're looking at different lipid systems, such as cubosomes, solid lipid nanoparticles, which have shown that we can improve the activity in solution, we can increase the stability, and we can promote the interaction of the peptides with the bacterial membrane by using these lipid systems. Uh, we've also used these lipid cubic phases for developing long-acting injectables for proteins. Um, and we've used, we've incorporated different hydrophilic proteins and hydrophobic proteins, and then measured their release and activity after release. Um, and Sally is actually here today who did this work. She's moved on, and we'll talk about where she's gone in a second. 
Um, we have a couple of small projects with industry on hydrogels. So Boston Scientific, we're looking at the location of protein loaded into different hydrogels. And Celio Medical, um, which is where Sally is now, uh, we're doing some work on the characterization of a biodegradable hydrogel sealant that seals the puncture wound um, when you get a biopsy taken in your lung. So Celio Medical is a spin-out that spun out in 2019. Um, they have a new facility in the Guinness Innovation Center, Dublin, um, and they're expanding their team at the moment. And uh, the materials team are uh, doing some work uh, to help them get prepared for their clinical studies, which will happen in the next year. Um, we also have a, a multi-partner project, we have five industry partners, on looking at a study uh, of reusing protein A resin for different monoclonal antibody products. Protein A resin is expensive and um, getting, uh, only getting more expensive. Um, and what we're looking to prove is that you can run multiple products on your, down your protein A column, that you can m minimize the cross-contamination, or at least measure the cross-contamination, and to check that the cleaning procedure that you need to use between products is not too harsh. We're using a, a QTOF method, and Stanislas is the postdoc on this project. He has a poster again this afternoon, and he'll also be at the QTOF during the lab tours. So please um, ask him some questions about his project. Um, I won't really talk about this one. Norma already mentioned it. It's the collaboration between uh, the model, modeling team and us uh, on the drug ID method with Sanofi. And that's it. I hope I haven't gone too far over time. But just a couple of upcoming events. Uh, we're hosting a solid state and a more workshop in November. Uh, Eric Munson is coming over from Purdue, um, and he's going to deliver that workshop. We will circulate a registration link soon. We also are um, helping to organize a long-acting injectable conference with Janssen. And this will disseminate uh, some of the findings from our Marie Curie program, the Long Act Now, where we compare top-down versus bottom-up technologies and the PAT for Nano, which is another EU project led by Alan Ryder in Galway. Uh, and that will be on in Antwerp and Brussels. And again, that website's coming up. And very lastly, come to our technical meeting, 9th of December, in, in here, probably in this room, in person, and learn more about the projects. So thank you for your time.